one. Welcome to our paint YouTube. We are here today to talk about all things paint, how it works with different fabrics and, and Wood. different lighting. So we hope you enjoy. One, two, three. <laughs> Painted the wall that the neighboring dies into. From the wall. Oh, no, you had it. Top line paint is really hard. Like I think, you know, you and I have been working with paint and trying to select paint colors and help people with paint, give advice on paint. And it's not easy. Like you have to take into consideration really three main things today that we hope to give people tips and tricks on, which is first, what light are you working with? Do you have a lot of incandescent light or light produced by electricity? Or do you have natural light, light produced by sun or natural light? Um, and what is reflecting light? And people forget like paint in the room, the color of your wood floors, fabric or your rug, reflect colors up onto your paint and your walls, especially white. Yeah, and you, you really wanna make sure that you're picking paint in the light, but also seeing what it looks like in the space. Really good point. Dark. So yes, when you're selecting paint colors, you wanna look at them during the daytime and look at them at nighttime and you'll see how they change. They might yellow out, they might pink out, they might green out, they might be really dark and you know sexy at night, but add some light and life and color during the day. Before you get your paint and start brushing your walls, right? You get what they call paint samples or a swatch. And you can go to Home Depot, your local paint store and get these little guys. And you bring them home and you start playing and be like playful and creative and Wendy and I start here a lot, like, oh, should we do this white, that white, this green, this blue? Really hard to work with. They're tiny. They're so small. I mean, yeah. this swatch might look great with this fabric or this wood, but having it big and painted in the whole room, the more paint that happens, the, the, the color changes. So then you can graduate once you hone in on getting a sample that you like, you can say, oh, I think I like three or four, and then you can hone in on larger samples that you can get from a paint store that you can then tape up and put in different spaces in the wall, or in the room, rather, to see what their relationship is with their surroundings. Yeah. One of the most important places to tape up your paint, instead of it floating in the middle of the wall, you would put it next to a doorway that you have trim color or the paint that's around your door or window. If that's not changing, you want to learn what the relationship of that is with the paint you're selecting. Yeah, and some stores have swatches that are even bigger than this. And you could paint a swatch on the wall, which we also recommend if you're debating between two final colors you can really see then what it's gonna look like. Yeah, so you would go to the paint store and you would buy a quart. So it's a little sample of paint. They don't make it any smaller. We wish we had less, but you pay for a quart. So there's different samples that you can get and they range in price point depending on what brand you get and what style of paint you get. But you could take those home and again, paint them over your wall in certain areas. It's a commitment because once you paint that area, you know you're, you're committed. Painting. Yeah, you're painting. Mm -hmm. Some things that people don't realize is if you're painting over a color and you're painting the wall white, the color that's gonna sh come from the base is gonna shine through to your new color. So we always talk about priming the walls. So priming the walls means you buy a paint called a primer or white and you prime the area and then you put your sample up. That's actually the right way to do it because that will reflect the actual color, yeah. right? So this is a good example. This color is so dark that if you painted white over it, the blue would show through. It wouldn't be the clean, it would look crisp gray. white that you want. Right. So you'd prime it and then you'd put a paint layer over it to see what that looks like. You might even need another coat on top of that, depending on how dark the paint is underneath. Yeah, so we've talked about the different samples you can get. You can get the small samples for free. You, sometimes paint stores charge you a dollar for here. And if you want access to many different types of colors, you ask for and pay for at a paint store, a thing called a paint deck. And this shows all sorts of different colors that you can bring at home, work with fabric, work with your wood, work with what is in your surroundings, and then maybe go back to the paint store and ask for larger samples of what you've graduated from here. So another tip we like to talk about, we get lots of questions about like what sheen you should paint your paint. And so there are one, two, three areas in your room. It's the ceiling, ceiling the, the walls, walls and the, the trim. trim. And so the trim is something that usually 
is painted a higher gloss, which in most brands is called satin. And, and why is that though? It's because it's a higher use area. There's more traffic along the trim. And so the glossier, typically, yep. the... And there's more moisture, because doors and windows open that allow weather and moisture to come in and out. So it's uh, more protective for the paint and the wood that it's, it's a higher clean. gloss and that you can wipe it down, mm -hmm. right? The wall sheen, the most popular wall sheen would be eggshell because it's not too reflective of light and it's not too flat that you can't wipe it down. Mm -hmm. And the most popular ceiling sheen is called flat. flat because there's obviously not a lot of fingerprints or moisture happening on the ceiling and you don't have a lot of light reflection. Yeah, you also don't wanna draw attention to the ceiling in these <coughs> cases, so you don't want that shine. And you might decide with a wall if there's texture like brick to do a high gloss paint here just to add more interest. But typically you would do an eggshell. Right, on the wall. but that's the whole thing. What's fun about gloss, you pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Gloss isn't a bad thing. High gloss or a high sheen mm -hmm. can be a really fun expression. It reflects more light. So if your room is kind of has dull moments, you might want a high gloss paint, a side table or a coffee table, or you know, Wendy would always say like, maybe the perimeter of a frame or the surrounding of a mirror. High gloss can, you know, tell a really fun light reflection or um, kind of textural story. Yeah, it can be a subtle way to really add personality to your space. Yeah, so it goes flat on the ceiling, usually, usually, eggshell on the walls, and a satin on the trim. In a bathroom, you have more moisture. Right. So you would typically go with a high gloss or a satin, right? Really important, yep. The walls you might have to be a higher sheen to be more protective to the moisture that's in the room from steam from a bath or a shower. And the trim, you could take either the same sheen, so satin and satin, or you could go satin and high gloss if you wanted to get crazy. Whenever you're changing sheens next to each other, there will be a difference in the color of paint that shows. So like a flat white is gonna look different than a high gloss white. The high gloss white's gonna actually look brighter because there's more light reflection. Mm -hmm. Another thing to keep in mind is use the service people around you. Paint mm -hmm. The paint shops know a lot. Mm -hmm. Ask them about the different quality levels of paint and what am I paying for in $50 a gallon versus $30 a gallon. Use them, learn about the paint. Learn about the hardness, like how durable the paint is. I always try to explore the hardest paint I can use if I'm painting interior cabinets. I think to myself, like, work with the paint brand that I'm using. We love to use Miller locally, but Sherwin-Williams is a national brand and so is Benjamin Moore. But work with those guys to say, what is your most durable paint? And explain to them the area, the space, and the room that you're using it in. There's also some really interesting paint companies out there too, if you're looking for unique colors and you're not sure where to start, like Clara Paint. Yes. They're so good. Um, and your painters are very well educated too. So if you forget everything that we told you today, don't worry, your painter knows everything. I mean, they know what your trim typically will be painted yeah, a good, sheen. Yeah, a good painter has tons of experience yes. with painting trim and sheen and what paint brand and product within that brand works well and responds well for drying time, bathrooms, cabinets, trim. Yeah, and the other thing, this may seem obvious to some, but I did not know this the first time I painted my house. You can take a piece of your paint to your local paint shop and they will match the color and it doesn't matter what brand it is, you can still match a white Miller paint to yes. the same white Benjamin Moore, for yes. example. Three things we had to consider here is the white of the door, that's our base. Then we paint the trim and the wall. All these relationships are important. This is a great place to get samples and see how the whites work together. White is the hardest color. And the sheen, you can see there's a little bit of a gloss here. This is flatter. So what's so crazy about these, you guys, is what do we always say? White is the hardest color. If you look at any of these by themselves, they're white right but you put them next to each other and you this see so much more purple. more purple and blue and so you're never picking your color by comparing it next to a bunch of other colors you're choosing from the key to choosing paint is remove it from the cluster and put it with what you're wanting it to work with so look how amazing that looks you're pulling the white out of the fabric you've got that white 
a green, a darker, you know, this has some browns in it. What's so cool about paint is see how that changes the whole vibe. It looks less washed out and richer. So imagine the walls, you know, in your office or in your library or wherever with the creamier color versus the white. It just changes the whole vibe. This is so much warmer. Right, Beautiful. it's so crazy. So you do want to bring your samples home and see how they look. Same thing here. Wendy put together a really pretty paint color that kind of hints at some of the green in here. It's got creams, a metallic, this paint color. You change it, look how most people would go to a white. Look how washed out it is. And this is where you need to play. Like that all of a sudden immediately works better mm -hmm. than that paint color. It, it's just trust yourself, use your eye, and you know, do your best. You can also hire someone for a paint consultant in your area, just Google paint consultant because they have a ton of experience. So the go-to for this color palette would probably be a white paint color, which it's is- people's comfort zone. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. Right, it's people's comfort but zone. look what happens when you go a little bit moodier with one of these colors. So this gets you a little bit darker, but then look at this. To pull oh. the color out of what's happening. So when you go to your paint store and you're trying to pick from your samples, or if you're working with one of these decks that we talked about, pick a color in here and play with it. Wow, do I want to pull the yellow, the lighter green, the super dark and stormy, the orange, and then bring it home, get a sample and see how it plays with the rest of your fabrics or wallpaper that you're working with in the area. If I were using this wallpaper, which is obviously super, it's one of my favorites, House of Hackney, it's obviously super dark and stormy and committed, I know we're talking paint here, but the paint in the room would probably be pretty limited. I would probably use this on the walls and the ceiling. And to be honest, I'd probably take something even darker than this and paint the trim around the perimeter of the doors and the baseboard that the wallpaper kisses to just bring that whole moody vibe in. So take chances. If your trim in your house is all white, but you're wallpapering a room with something that's unique and fun, test you know, the area or like push yourself rather and paint your trim color something different to talk to the wallpaper. So white is what you're probably starting to work with like we've talked about earlier. Look what happens when you take out white and you put in a warmer color like Chickpea Please by Miller Paint. It's one of our favorites. Look at how it warms up this palette and brings the brass so and pretty. Definitely gorgeous. a more risky move, right? Mm -hmm. Like it takes guts to do that. Yeah. But you can see again, how much it changes the, the whole difference. room. White. Wow. Great. Okay, a lot of people don't know this, Wendy, but when you're working with a paint deck, the base color is the first and darkest color at the bottom and it works up from there. So if you're you know, if you're wanting your base color to read more blue than green, like start with your See how these are way darker and that's reading, what do you see that color as? Like Blue, like a dark like, blue. Right, so Im immediately you would kind of start fanning these out and play with what works for it. And you can see really quickly none of these work, right? right? And then you come over here into these darker zones this and that's- starts to work. So that's how you pick your color. Like it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. Paint is hard, don't get me wrong, but if you know how to use these decks and just, you know, then then my next step would be what? Oh, I'm liking this, I'm not sure if I like this. I'd get all three samples, I'd bring them home, I'd see how they look against my trim, against any wood that's in the area reflecting, and with my new fabric that I'm excited to do a pillow or a chair or whatever it's chosen for. So a lot of times your deck, will say it says interiors or primer colors, you can see how flat, matte, eggshell, pearl, they have different finishes. So you can see them in here and how much the light reflects. So that can be helpful if you don't actually know what a flat or an eggshell would look like, you can actually see them also provided in these paint decks. So that can be really helpful. Yeah, this is my favorite white. What is it? Chantilly lace. I know, I tried to use it today, but it was, Chantilly it has white. a lot of gray in it. Again, next to the trim, yeah. but it's gorgeous. If you're starting afresh, yep. my paint, favorite white paint. paint to use in a space that gets lots of natural light in a transitional space from modern to traditional would be White Dove by Benjamin Moore. My other favorite go-to color for just my favorite white that works in a lot of spaces 
is Simply White by Benjamin Moore. And my favorite white is Chantilly Lace, especially in spaces that don't have great natural light because it's so bright. Here's an example from our treehouse project where we had this beautiful wallpaper and we decided to pull this beautiful blue-gray color and paint the adjacent wall. Thank you so much for watching our paint YouTube. We hope you learned a ton today. I feel like we talked a lot. Yeah, and I think there's gonna be questions. I don't to say about paint. So yeah, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. We promise we'll get back to you. We love talking about paint. We love helping people with their color palettes at home. Comment, subscribe. And like. Like, share, all the things. In a bathroom, you have more moisture. Right. I mouthed it, so let's do it again. <laughs> I went, looking at the wallpaper, and we chose one of these colors and painted the neighboring wall. Just like. Painted the neighboring wall. Yeah.